But there are some beautiful studies published in Cell Reports last year and the year before showing that people who take a 20 minute nap within the four hours after triggering learning, they learn much faster. In other words, the brain rewires much faster. There's a replay of the neurons very fast at something like 10 or 20x the speed that the normally they would be rehearsing it. So you're getting more repetitions where was that tool when I was going through school? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, learning is a two-stage process. And the learning I'm referring to is specifically deliberate learning. You know, children are learning passively all the time. They're taking in new information. Their brain is it's not a complete tabula rasa. It's not a complete blank slate. There's some hardwired functions they show up with, like breathing, <laughs> like heart rate, heart uh, controlling heart rate. That helps. But that helps. I mean, you know, offload a, the, as much as you can to the genetic program to hardwire the nervous system so they can learn how to walk. And walking is a good example. A, a kid learns how to walk and then walks reflexively. But of course, at any stage, you can think about how you're walking. That, that's this uh, flexible transition between voluntary and involuntary movement. But you have to learn how to walk. What we're talking about now is generally deliberate learning, language learning, skill learning, learning knowledge of any kind, um, learning how to you know, navigate the emotional dynamics of a relationship, well, anything. Two phases. One is active engagement and focus. Much of the trigger for neuroplasticity as a process is engaged by dopamine and norepinephrine and a molecule called acetylcholine, which is liberated from multiple sources that we always talk about how acetylcholine controls the, the, the contraction of muscles. But in the brain, acetylcholine mainly comes from two sets of neurons, one in the brain stem and another in the basal forebrain. It serves as a kind of a highlighter marking particular connections or neurons that later stand a chance to become stronger. So let me give an example. I don't speak a second language, but let's say I decide I was going to learn conversational French. I would learn some nouns or some verbs. I would, I would focus on this. And the greater degree of focus that I bring, the greater amount of acetylcholine is released at that time at the particular locations in the brain that are involved in enunciating the words and writing the comprehension, you know, multiple spots within the brain. That kind of marks those or flags those areas as potentially changing later. But the actual rewiring of the nervous system happens during states of deep sleep or sleep-like states. So when we say neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change in response to experience, that's a two-part process. It's a process, it's not an event. We always think about things as events, but in biology, almost everything is a process. The, the takeaway from this is in order to learn at any age, most critical thing is that you bring as much focus and active engagement to the learning, the, the encoding of the information, bringing in the information. And then that you get into a state of deep rest as quickly as possible. Typically that would be the night after you learn, uh, after you have this trigger. But there are some beautiful studies published in Cell Reports last year and the year before showing that people who take a 20 minute nap within the four hours after triggering learning or people that do a non-sleep deep rest type protocol, even just sitting there quietly and not doing anything, they learn much faster. In other words, the brain rewires much faster. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting and what's happening is very interesting. We've long known that during sleep, there's a replay of the neurons in the same sequence that they were played during the activity in the uh, earlier in that day. Sometimes even backwards for some reason that it's like the songs played backwards and I, who knows why. I don't think we should focus too much on that right now. But that replay is the consolidation of the information you learn. This is why you try something physically, try it physically. You can't do it. You can't do it. And then you come back a week later and voila, you can do it. You had the opportunity to change the neural circuits so that now you can do it. These non-sleep deep rest or these shallow naps of 20 to 30 minutes also create a replay or a firing of the neurons. But there's an additional tool. Get as focused as you can, but then relax as deeply as you For can. For how long? How Like if you're going to be focused on something, is there a certain amount of bandwidth we have where it's productive and then it becomes unproductive? Yeah, and it varies for people and some people use pharmacology to override what I'm about to say, but generally after about 90 minutes, we exist on these so-called 90 minute ultradian cycles. Everything in sleep is a 90 minute cycle. Everything in waking is a 90 minute cycle. If you sit down to work, you're like, all right, I'm finally doing it. I'm gonna turn my phone off. I'm gonna write this book. You know, people think that the expectation is that you're gonna be like a beam of focus for 90 minutes. That's not the case. You can flicker in and out. You're gonna get distracted. You bring yourself back. I mean, focus is an active process of bringing that spotlight of attention back. Mm -hmm. It's always much like, easier without the phone, much yeah. easier without the phone, much easier using a program called freedom free program online where you can just turn off the internet. It's very painful as you know, and yet there's something deeply satisfying about completing one of these 90 minute bouts. You really feel good in your brain and body because we were actually designed to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I it said definitely feels like a grind at some stage. Oh yeah. And that friction and that anxiety sometimes that we feel is adrenaline. 
It's, it's supposed to be stressful to learn. It's this idea that we just sit back and learn or that, you know, movies have really destroyed the notion of learning, the idea that you're gonna like pick up the sword and suddenly have the skills. You know, forget it. It's like, it's, it doesn't work that way. Some days are good and some days are worse. If you slept better, generally it's better. People are always trying to optimize how much caffeine, background noise, yes noise, yes music, no music. You have to tweak things according to your circumstances. But you nine, after about 90 minutes, you should really take a break and let your mind go idle somewhat. Ideally, you would take a 20 minute nap or a 30 minute nap or do a non-sleep depressed protocol within the first hour to four hours after that. But a lot of us have a lot of demands. You go straight from a 90 minute bout to commuting. Sleep that you get that night is going to be the most powerful tool for wiring the nervous system. That's, that's when it really happens. So we can talk about tools to, to get into deep sleep and stay asleep uh, more if you like. But there's another thing that you can do, which is that there's a beautiful literature on what's called gap learning effects, where let's say, uh, uh, and this has been looked at for physical skill learning, for music learning, math, etc., where if every couple of minutes, just randomly during your intense learning or focus, you pause and you just take 10 seconds and do nothing, just let your brain idle, eyes open or eyes closed, doesn't matter. What happens is your rates of learning actually increase. And the reason is, and now they've done neuroimaging on this, really excellent studies published in great journals show that during those little gaps that you're taking, there's a replay of the neurons very fast at something like 10 or 20x the speed that the, normally they would be rehearsing it. So you're getting more repetitions by stopping every once in a while. Now you actually have to do the work and how many of these to insert and it should be random. So there are some free apps out there where you can set like a random buzzer or just every once in a while while you're writing or trying to do something, you just pause and do nothing. Mm. Where was that tool when I was going through school? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that the, the, the science on this dates back about 20 years, but it's only now that there's an, a, enough of what I call a kind of center of mass around the, these studies that really point to the fact that gap learning effects are really strong. They're very beneficial. You learn faster. So it's focus, rest, focus, rest, focus, rest. And that can be done on the micro level, like within that 90 minute block. Let's just make up a number for fun so people have something to, to anchor to. If you're going to sit down and do an hour of work, let's say for every 60 minutes of focus or learning that you try and do, introduce 30 gaps of 10 seconds at random, truly at random, not a, on a regular interval. And then sometime later that day, if you can do an NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. And if you can't, okay, no big deal. It, you won't learn as fast, but you'll still learn provided that you get into deep sleep that night. Let's say you have a lousy night's sleep. You'll still learn, but you won't learn as well. And maybe the next night you stand a chance of encoding that information. So neuroplasticity involves a very strong trigger and then deep relaxation is when the actual rewiring and there are, are exceptions to this, but I should just mention, because it brings us back to an earlier point, that when you think about the, the tools that people use to enhance focus, Ritalin, Adderall, L-tyrosine, excessive amounts of caffeine, nicotine, those all help with the trigger part, but they don't help with the relaxation part. And so a lot of people don't learn. They just get really good at doing, but they don't actually learn. So very effective people, in regardless of workplace or activity, sport or cognitive work or otherwise, perform very well because they're very good at regulating the seesaw of focus, relax, focus, relax. And in the long term, it also is, is very health enhancing as opposed to health depleting. I mean, it, I know a dozen or more people who have done very, very well in business or academia who are a, a mess. They're physically a mess. They're emotionally a mess. They're mentally a mess. Their relationships are a mess. People that I you know, consider successful are people that are very successful in multiple domains of life. And that almost always correlates with an ability to engage and disengage, deliberately engage and, and deliberately disengage.